Father Palakal is an Indian musicologist, singer and composer. He is the founder and president of the Christian Musicological Society of uh, India. Father Palakal, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Baronic. Uh, how are we proceeding? Do we show a little bit of the film, of the video, or...? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, can I start with a prayer, if you don't mind? Sure. <laughs> okay. Barik mar, barik mar, barik mar, makarvalan, maran wala hum rahmanu sad taibu sedra se. Halin Shwehev Kandishev Mahyane Walahaye Kadla Shavinan Bashara Kadla Shavinan The Christian Musicological Society of India, an international research forum for Christian music in India. Welcome to the presentation on Reviving the Sound, Sentiments and Melodies of Aramaic Chant in India. Revisiting the past to redefine the future. Aramaic project to resuscitate an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. A program to honor, cherish, and preserve the unparalleled legacy of an ancient language and music tradition that are part of the history of India and an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Reclaiming the past to reaffirm identity. Young Syro Malabar Catholics are connecting with their Syriac roots. How did that interest develop along these years? Yeah, so it touched me so deeply then that I wanted to explore it more and understand, like, where did the history from this come? And also it became, a small, small parts of it became a part of my daily prayer and worship as well. Your daily prayer and worship? Yes. Syriac chant? Yes. A young person like you? That is really fascinating. So what attracted you? Is it the melody or the text or the meaning or a combination of the three? I would say a combination, but mostly the sounds of the language and the music, the melody. Very nice. So, so you would use it for your personal prayer. How would you place it in the context of your personal prayer? My favorite Syriac hymn is Trisadion, and it's a hymn that is asking for God's mercy, and so that's one that I like to sing in the morning sometimes before I start my day, like asking for God's mercy before I start wow. my day. Wow. Can you please sing that? Yeah, sure. Kandisha Kandisha Convention Center in Houston, Texas. We are here for the North American Sierra Malabar Convention and I just happened to meet a young man 
uh, George Nyara Kunail. And uh, during the conversation, it happened that he recently got married on May 9th in Pale, Ramapuram Church. And guess what? There were three Siri chants during the wedding ceremony. So I got interested, I wanted to talk to him. So thank you, George. Uh, I'm fascinated that you you live in America. Were you born here? Born and brought up here. You were born, born and brought up here, but you went in search of a bride to Kerala. But during the ceremony, you insisted that there were Siriac chants in the ceremony. How, why, how did you get attracted to Siriac chants? I think just growing up in the Sierra Malabar Church, I'm from the Bronx Parish, going to a lot of youth conferences, youth conventions like this. We had a lot of lectures on Sierra Malabar liturgy and Gurbana, and now I'm a CCD teacher who teaches Sunday school. So that made me interested in Sierra Malabar, myself as a Sierra, my Sierra Malabar identity, history, culture. And so when I learned more about it, um, I learned about going back to our roots and learning the Syriac chants and everything, how beautiful it is, and bringing back our ancient roots back into the Gurbana. So just learning more about it, and it just brings us closer to the Eucharist and the Gurbana. So I wanted it to be part of my wedding. That is amazing. Bilingual Gurbana, a North American story. It all started with an experiment at the National Shrine in Washington, D.C., at a bilingual cabana, in English and Syriac. Children are entering into the Syriac world. Syriac heritage is becoming a topic of conversation at the dining table at homes. As a result, children are warming up to the Syriac language and music.
Sagadeen and Mar is coming back. The famous Christological hymn Sagadeen and Mar is re-entering into the prayer life of the Syro Malabar Catholics. Reinstating the crowning ceremony during the marriage and baptism rituals. A grassroots level movement is gaining momentum among couples who encourage their local vicars to incorporate the forgotten crowning ceremony in the wedding and baptism rituals. Okay, thank you. First of all, I would like to uh, greet all of you and thank you for the organizers for uh, organizing this family reunion. Looking at the panel, I see that we are all long lost cousins coming together as a joint family. Our 20 centuries long umbilical cord extends itself to the table of Last Supper in Jerusalem. Hana Isau Pagra Deal. Wow, what an honor and privilege. Quoting the words of Patriarch Louis Sacco who spoke recently in front of Pope Francis in Iraq. We have the honor and the privilege to draw from the source and not from the streams. So I'm very happy. Father MP George, who is the next presenter, I, and I are grateful that you included India into this larger discourse. And after the short presentation, we will see how relevant the Indian tradition is. <clears throat> I'm going to share with you a few uh, thoughts that motivated me to embark on this Aramaic project. One, our generation should not let the sound of the sacred language disappear because of negligence. 500 years from now, people should not look at the Syriac script as we look at the hieroglyphics and wonder how these words sounded. Two, the Syriac chant repertory he is not a casual collection of melodies, but is unique with its own musical grammar and syntax. Both East Syriac and West Syriac liturgies and music traditions have coexisted in India for centuries. There were such luminaries as Father Chandi Kadavil, 1588 to 1673. The Portuguese missionaries called him Alexander the Indian. The Portuguese did not like the Syriac tradition of St. Thomas Christians that much, but they respected Father Chandi Kadabil for his knowledge of the Syriac language. Who could compose across the hymns in Syriac? I wanted to propose to consider Syriac chants in India as a third system of music after Karnatak and Hindustani systems. This may be an additional argument in our application to the UNESCO to ask for a special status of Syriac as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. 3. Christianity is an Eastern religion and India is part of that Eastness. Just look at the opening words in the book of Esther, how the author of the book of Esther introduces the topic. My friend, Sag Gandhi, thinks that the theology of the fourth gospel is of Indian origin. And who is the mediator between the two worlds? St. Thomas the Apostle of India. In any case, Syriac became an essential component of the cultural fabric of India, making the country a part of the geography of early Christianity. It adds to the greatness of the wonder that is India. I started the Aramaic project in 2013. The biggest rewards came in 2019 and 2020. The Sierra Malabar children at Melbourne in Australia sang the Syriac hymn Bar Mariam as a Christmas carol during a secular celebration of Christmas. 
you can watch this on Aramaic Project 173. In 2020, the Sierra Marabar community in Houston, Texas, started Christmas Kurbana by singing the Christological hymn Sagadin Mar three times. Both Sagadin Mar and Barmariam have significance beyond the realms of liturgy and music. Finally, a comment about the chant Bogdan Hendes that you heard in the concert on the first day. Let me sing it now and sing uh, another Malayalam song. Bogdan Hendes Ya he unaluhun, raham lah dade, raham lah dade. At the washing of the feet on Holy Thursday. Now let me sing a Malayalam chant that I heard from my mother when I was about four or five years of age. I was the first born. My sister was late to come in, so I was the reigning prince. Mom had all the time in the world for extracurricular activities. And this chant, I couldn't remember the words, but the melody struck in my little brain. Here it is. <clears throat> this is an epic poem, the exordium from an epic poem. <clears throat> mm. Sarveshwara Sarvanatha Para Para Sarvesha Sarvagunamburashe Sarvastudi Kyumni Karana Magayal Sarvesha Ninestudi Chidunu Look at the melody. Pukdan and the Srik melody. Hayahe Vinaluhun Raham Lahudade Raham Lahudade. See the root. The melody is very, very much similar. Interesting topic of discussion we had the other day. Which comes first? The Indian melody comes first and the Surya comes second? Or the Surya comes first and was adapted to the Indian melody? We don't know. That is a million dollar question for researchers, future researchers to find out. So let me conclude here. Um, the video those who haven't seen, there are much more interesting material and uh, it is self-explanatory. So I can, uh, may I invite questions, comments? Father Kalakal, maybe uh, while we wait for people and questions, uh, it was uh, very nice to see uh, how you are already active to propose your heritage to transmit it to the next generations. And we saw that the children are singing with their, all their heart. Uh, so maybe how, how, how are you teaching to them? What is your method? Uh, whenever I get an invitation to celebrate Sri Bar Kurbana, I go a day in advance and prepare the choir. And But most important, the website that I'm happy Peter Jeffrey. By the way, it looks like Peter Jeffrey and I had a secret conversation eight years ago. I'm look at I'm just following what he proposed yesterday in his presentation. So somehow children are warming up to it. This was beyond much beyond my expectation, but it is happening. I teach them in person and on through internet and so on. And then the conversation is spreading through the website is becoming a resource place. People learn the chant. We also have an encyclopedia of uh, Syriac chants where the text transliteration and translation are provided. We would like to improve upon it as resources come by. By the way, I take this opportunity to thank my team, my staff and my office in Kochi, India. I think they are watching it. Thank you for their dedicated efforts. So the website is becoming the means of uh, learning for children. Um, I liked the proposal that Peter Jeffrey gave that we should present this to the UNESCO and the geographical extent of this tradition uh, reaches farther back to India and we should collate all this and prepare an application to the UNESCO. And I was initially planning to get in touch with government agencies in India because the application has to come from India about the Indian tradition. And Father MP George will agree with me that this tradition has taken its roots in India and has grown, has taken a unique identity. 
which is different from the rest of the world. So taken together, this is a unique proposal that we should present to the UNESCO. Instead of doing it from one country and one tradition, if we can do it collab in a collaborative effort, it might get more steam. Yeah. Thank you. You're most welcome. I have a question, maybe. I heard in your recordings that uh, uh, the way of singing in those communities is very modern, with a synthesizer accompaniment and so forth. Uh, how do you stay to toward this uh, trend? Okay, interesting. Uh, it is something that I don't have a control over. Young people look for different kinds of sonorities. As uh, Professor Peter Jeffrey mentioned yesterday, we are in a different world. They're, they're, the way they have grown up, the way they are used to sonorities is from, different from us. They need these kind of embellishments. And uh, sometimes it is difficult to control them. And I think let them enjoy, let them celebrate uh, the songs as they want to. That is my take on this. Thank you. I'd like to talk about two, the two chants that I mentioned, Baramariam, that children Australia sang, and Sagadin and Mar, which has a greater presence in the video. Baramariam, 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 the eldest Maria. Okay. If Mary gave birth to the Son of God, is there a problem with Emedalaha? Isn't it an exegesis of Emedalaha? So why did we go through so many discussions and accusations about the theology of the St. Thomas Christians? It's an irony that when the Portuguese missionaries came, they looked down upon the Syria Christians, thinking that they don't have the correct theology. They don't have the correct understanding of Catholic faith. Meanwhile, our forefathers were, were singing in their literary hours, Baru Mariam, Baru Mariam, Baru Allah, Son of Mary, Son of Mary. Mary brought forth the Son of God. So correct theology was existing in the form of chant. Second, Sagadin and Mar, hugely important chant. It is part of the chant Brihanara. This is the 18th verse. And uh, when that came, when that text came, they sang it three times. And the children, the youngsters in Houston sang it three times. Sagadin and Mar, La La Husag, Walna Shusag, Dilapu Laga. We praise you, O Lord, in your humanity and divinity, undivided humanity and divinity, without doubt. Wow. So, what is the problem? Ephesus and Chalcedon, everything is solved here. There is no issue here. We believe in the undivided humanity and divinity. Without doubt, the La Pulaga. So, what was all this discussions about Nestorianism and this and that? How much of, how much energy we spent on unnecessary contradictions while we were singing that Saint Thomas Christians were singing the correct theology? Maybe they were not talking about it, but their chants were proclaiming correct. Theology. Coming back to Peter Jeffrey's uh, point yesterday, chance is a medium to teach doctrines. And in the video, uh, in a few seconds later, we will see a young girl singing Sagadin and Mar. Of course, the girl doesn't understand the meaning, the profound meaning of the text. But when she grows up, she will ask, what is the meaning of this? And she will learn. So this is the approach that I'm trying to take. Now, about the chant that I sing as a prayer in the beginning. What is not in... Okay. 
to yes, have time? I think we need to uh, give floor to the next speaker. Oh, but okay. You uh, you uh, you know you you drive us into one of the aspects that we are um, trying to understand, and the fact that. Uh, there is a theological, deep theological teachings behind the ancient words of these songs. So it is important indeed to maintain uh, the Syriac language and, and, and the correct one. So, uh, and also the importance of uh, what, one of the reasons why we want to teach uh, these songs to the next generations because they indeed carry uh, the faith. That's a very important aspect. Thank you very much again.